Hello everyone, Dom here and welcome back to this tech video. In this video I will show you how to create a virtual machine and a container in Proxmox. I will explain what are the difference between both methods, what preparation you need to do, how to create the containers or machines and last but not least how to make settings in both variants. So let's start with the difference between KVM and LXC containers. LXC containers stands for Linux containers and KVM for kernel based virtual machine. KVM allows multiple virtual machines to be created from unmodified Linux or Windows images. KVM is flexible and scalable, hardware devices can be passed directly into the virtual machine and almost all settings and operating system can be customized. Linux containers are a lightweight virtualization method and a full alternative to the full virtualization and it takes place at operating system level. So no deeper settings can be made to the kernel or operating system itself. Also no hardware can be passed directly into the LXC container. In Proxmox the settings between KVM based machines and containers look different. While in virtual machines the hardware itself can be changed in many ways, this cannot be done in containers. Most importantly, no hardware can be passed directly into the virtual machine. This is useful and performant, for example, if you want to virtualize a NAS system with multiple hard drives. For that, a PCI HBA card is then installed in the server and this is completely passed through to the virtual machine. This way, all functions of the NAS operating system can be guaranteed and the complete hard disk properties and monitor values can be accessed. The virtual machines on KVM basis and container have however both a justification. It depends on the use case which method you use for smaller machines where I know that I don't have to change anything on the kernel or don't have to forward hardware directly, I like to use the smaller containers. Above all, they are quickly created and ready to use with a few seconds. With full virtual machines based on KVM, on the other hand, the complete operating system must always be installed. This takes some time and requires some configuration during installation. The great advantage of a virtual machine is that the Windows operating system and its server variants can also be installed only in a KVM virtualization. It is even possible to install the Mac OS operating system in a virtual machine based on KVM. So before we can use our first container and virtual machine, there are some preparations to be done. The first step is to download a container template and upload an operating system ISO file to the Proxmox server. So let's jump in the computer. First of all, we want to create a container and for this we have to download the pre-made container templates. So we can just do it by press here on the storage, local PVE, and here you can see your storage stuff. But for now we want to create a container and therefore we need some container templates you can see this point here, CT templates. So you can upload some container templates from your desktop. You can download some templates from an internet address or you can choose this one here, templates, and there you find some pre-made images and templates. So let's start and we want to download an Ubuntu image. So let's say we want the newest version here, just select one click download and the download will begin. It takes some time. Okay, it's okay. And now I can see here my downloaded Ubuntu standard image. And if you want to make a virtual machine, you need an ISO image. You can upload them here. Just click on ISO images. Of course, you can upload here and you can download from an URL. Let's try this option. So I want to get Ubuntu for example and we want the yeah let's try the desktop version the latest version is 2110 click on it and here you can grab the download link of course this is German here like this is the point for just copy the link address and now I can here download from an internet address and put in the URL Whew, this is some crap here we can delete it this looks nice. Query URL, so you get the meta information and the file name from this ISO image. You see the size here and now you can just click download and the download will begin. Then if you have a fast internet speed at home, this will take not so long. 
but my internet here is a bit slower, so it will take a while. So the download is complete. We can just close this window here. And now you can see I have an ISO image here and a container template here. And this is all you need to know for the preparation. So we downloaded all files and let's start to create a container. I will show you on the screen. Now you can choose your Proxmox virtual environment server here. And on this white corner here, you can see you can create a virtual machine and you can create a container and we will start with the container. Just click this blue button, select a host name like test. You can choose some stuff here, but you see I have no resource pools right now. So just leave them empty. Of course, we need a password. This is the password for the root user. Or also we can add a public key, but just start with the password. Click next. Now I have to choose a template. This is the template we just downloaded. Select it. Next. Here you can fill some settings for the hard disk drive. So I think eight gig is okay. Now I can select how many CPU cores this container will have. Just say two and the same thing with RAM. So just enter the number of memory you want to allocate to this container. Let's say 512 is okay. Next, here you can make some network settings. I just leave it default. Like you can set up here uh, some MAC address if you want to select a manual MAC address for this container or you can add some VLANs, but this is another video. So we just skip that here, but maybe we should enable DHCP so that this container gets an individual IP address from our router. I click next and you can add a DNS domain and server, but I will just want to use the standard Proxmox stuff. So leave it empty and click next. Now we can check all settings and configurations we made press finish and the container is in creation. As you can see, it's already done. It's like a few seconds and you have a wonderful container. You can click it here and you can start it right here. To check if it's running, you see this matrix here or you can just join into the console, press it. We got a new root user and this is the password we created in the configuration. And this is it, we're in. So we created a container and it's already running. Let's start to create a virtual machine. Just we click this blue button here, create virtual machine. We can give it a name. We can click next, select our ISO image. It's Ubuntu. This is the one we downloaded straight to the server. Everything is fine here. Click next. Here you can make some system settings and you can see that you can make a lot more settings as in the container control panel. This is because the virtual machine is a full virtual machine with all settings and you can change a lot here. But for standard purposes, this is okay. We just can click next. Of course, we can create some disks here and the disk size here is 32. It's okay. I want two CPU cores, the memory, is okay and of course the network stuff and here we can change stuff like the bridge but the standard settings are totally fine just click next we can check the settings here of course we make no mistakes so click finish and it will take a while you can see it down here if this check here is okay then we are up and running oh and this actually is it so here it is it's created it's okay and now we can here see the full name of our virtual machine and we just need to start it and it's up and running. And the difference between the container and this virtual machine is now if we join the console, we see this is the installation menu from the Ubuntu ISO image we just downloaded. This is because the virtual machine has to be installed completely new and the container is just a template. It's already finished because 
we don't need to install a whole system, we use the system of the server. So let's assume you have installed a container or a virtual machine and you want to change some settings. You just click on a container and on a resources tab. And now you can see, you can add some memory here. Just click edit and enter the new size. Or you can add a mount point for hard disk storage. You can resize the existing disk. Here you can make some network settings like instant. If you change it here, it will be instantly passed in a container. If you check out the virtual machine in the hardware tab here, you can also edit some stuff like the memory or the processors. And you can add a lot more stuff in a virtual machine because you know we have a fully virtualization and we have a full virtualized computer. So we can add a lot of hard disks, a CD, DVD drive, network devices, storage stuff. We can add some USB devices, of course, and this is not possible in a container. We can also change some options in a virtual machine, like the name, or if it will start automatically, if the server will start. We can do this too in a container, just click options, and we have here the started boot stuff. And yeah, I think this is enough for the beginning. So let's come to the conclusion. In this video, I have shown what the differences are between both variants, what preparations have to be made, how to create containers and virtual machines in Proxmox, and how to make settings in both variants. If you liked the video, give me a like and comment, or better yet, subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.